We've been talking about fair chance setups, and we defined a fair chance setup as one where the outcomes are unbiased and independent. To say that they're unbiased is to say that the long-run behavior doesn't favor any particular outcome. To say that they're independent is to say that the probability of any particular outcome is unaffected by the history of previous outcomes. Now, at this point, someone always asks me how we can tell whether a chance setup really is fair or not. This is a good question. Let's move this up to the top. Okay, here's the short answer. You can test this hypothesis. You can run trials, collect data on the outcomes, and examine the data. Random distributions have a characteristic signature, a structure, and you can compare the outcomes against what you would expect if the process was genuinely random. Now from this, you can estimate the likelihood that the outcomes are fair. I say you, but what I mean is that there are statistical techniques for doing this. I don't mean that it's easy for someone just walking into a casino to do this. Now when I say that you can estimate the likelihood that the outcomes are fair, there's always going to be a margin of error on this estimate. So what you're doing is putting bounds on the likelihood that you're right or wrong. You can reduce the margin of error and increase your confidence in your judgment by accumulating more data. But you might need a, quite a bit of data to rule out certain hypotheses. Let me illustrate the point. Here's a sequence of 63 outcomes where heads are blue and tails are red. The color coding lets you see the runs clearly. Now just looking at the sequence, it's not obvious whether this is generated by a random process or not. Our intuitions are often misleading. Lots of people looking at this will focus on the runs, like these two runs of five or this run of six, and wonder whether a truly random process would generate those. Someone else might focus on the ratio of heads to tails. It turns out that for this sequence, tails outnumbered heads. Instead of a 50-50 split, the ratio is 60-40 in favor of tails. So what do we make of this? Well, it could be the result of an unfair chance setup, but both the clustering you're seeing in the runs and the ratio is consistent with this being the product of a fair random process. In fact, it is. It was generated by a program that simulates an unbiased random coin toss. Now, if we had generated a random sequence that was somewhat biased in favor of heads or tails, I can tell you that just by inspection on a sample of 60 tosses, you could not tell the difference between it and an unbiased sequence. Nor could you tell by statistical analysis on such a small set of outcomes. The smaller the deviation from fairness, the larger the data set you need to resolve the discrepancy between what you would expect to see from a fair distribution and what you would expect to see from an unfair distribution. The upshot is that for smaller sets of runs like this, the issue isn't a matter of logic or probability theory. It also involves your assumptions and background beliefs about how the world works. We can make the point another way if we return to our original gambler's fallacy setup. Here we have a series of six heads in a row, and we're asking what the odds are that the seventh toss will be heads or tails. The classic gambler's fallacy is to think that there is some force at work that makes it increasingly unlikely that the next toss will be heads. Now that conclusion involves a failure to realize that fairness implies independence, so that the probability of the next toss will be the same as for every prior toss. We can think of this fallacy as a failure of logic. The assumption of fairness implies that the tosses are independent, the conclusion implies that they're not independent, the result is a logical contradiction. Now one way to resolve the contradiction is like this. You make the correct inference, based on the assumption, and grant that the chance of heads for any toss is always the same, 50%. But logic permits another option. You notice a series of heads and you think, okay, maybe I should treat this as evidence that the coin toss may not be fair. Maybe the coin itself is biased. Or maybe it's being tossed in a non-random way to increase the odds of it landing heads. Now, is there any way to rule out this option? Not at this stage. With only six tosses, there's no statistical test that can tell you whether the sequence is a product of a fair chance setup or an unfair setup. And my point is that we're not challenging the logic of the argument anymore. We're challenging the truth of one of the premises. Logic alone can't tell us whether to reject or accept the premise. What would make me confident about one choice or another is the background knowledge that I bring to the table. In this case, for example, if I knew that a professional magician was tossing the coins, then that might give me reason to think that the coin tossing was being manipulated. But if that wasn't the case and the coin looked otherwise normal, then this would probably lead me to favor the assumption that the coin toss is fair, and all we're seeing is a run of heads that is guaranteed to appear in enough tosses on a fair chance setup. 
Barry Greenstein is a professional poker player, and he has an apt comment on this question in his book, Ace on the River. Someone shows you a coin with a head and tail on it. You watch him flip it 10 times, and all 10 times it comes up heads. What's the probability that it will come up heads on the 11th flip? A novice gambler would tell you, tails is more likely than heads, since things have to even out and tails is due to come up. That's the gambler's fallacy. A math student would tell you, we can't predict the future from the past. The odds are still even. That's our rational judgment based on our understanding of probability theory. A professional gambler would say, there must be something wrong with the coin or the way it's being flipped. I wouldn't bet with the guy flipping it, but I'd bet someone else that heads will come up again. This suspicious judgment reflects the background experience of a professional gambler who takes 10 heads in a row as evidence that the coin is being manipulated. The point, again, is that the only judgment that is obviously irrational is the first one, the one that commits the gambler's fallacy. The other two are live options, and only the context and your background knowledge of the situation can tell you which of these you should prefer.